There is a story in The Guardian today uh, about Brexit and the Donald Trump election, which at first uh, made me be quite concerned, but then I discovered I know exactly what's going on. It's the European Union with their dirty tactics as usual. So the headline says, Johnson will wait for the US election result before a no-deal Brexit decision. Uh, and then <laughs> when you actually read the article itself, but at this point you would think that this is actually coming from the government. This is now the Downing Street line. They're going to wait to see if uh, Biden's going to win or obviously Trump's going to win. Um, and uh, so then we find out that Ivan Rogers, who was a former UK ambassador to the European Union, has uh, said that, again, even the sub headline is interesting. He thinks uh, that the prime minister will think that uh, history was going his way if Donald Trump is re-elected. So now you think it's Ivan Rogers saying that. No, no, it's the European Union. You read the actual um, story, you find out they're talking about how senior figures in European government, so all the EU ambassadors, um, they believe, they think that Boris Johnson is waiting for the result of the US election uh, before deciding whether to risk going with the no deal Brexit. Uh, but I love how The Guardian, the way they've written it, they're plunging the UK into a no deal Brexit um, uh, or going with a uh, some sort of trade deal with the European Union. Uh, the, the, the whole story is about the fact that Ivan Rogers, who was um, obviously UK ambassador to the European Union uh, under Theresa May, uh, then he left, he had some difficulties with her, and uh, he's still friends with a lot of the European government ministers and ambassadors, uh, so they're still obviously talking to each other, and uh, this is classic EU. They did the same thing with um, a number of other countries with Canada when they were negotiating the trade deal. Um, so they knew that obviously Ivan Rogers is still connected in the UK. Uh, so all these are EU ambassadors, government ministers uh, and all the other sources have been telling him uh, all these things. Uh, and then they briefed, guess what? The Guardian and the Observer <laughs> uh, to release this story uh, to divide um, this you know, so-called special relationship that uh, the UK and the US have. Uh, the whole idea is that they're getting desperate and uh, they're trying to divide these two allies uh, to obviously make it essentially beneficial for themselves to push the UK to be forced to sign the trade deal. Now, <laughs> it makes no sense because again, um, a lot of people are now talking about this story without actually explaining the details. I, I saw on the, the actual mainstream media on certain channels uh, they've been talking about it. They don't really say that uh, this is a story that's actually coming from the European Union. This is not Boris Johnson actually saying it. Um, and uh, yeah, so Ivan Rogers uh, was played by the EU ambassadors unless he's actually in it with them. But you know, I don't I highly doubt that. Uh, so he's, he's now said that several very senior sources in capitals across Europe have told me that they believe that Johnson will await clarity on the presidential election result before finally deciding whether to jump to no deal with the EU or to conclude that this is just too risky with Biden heading for the White House. Um, because we know that Joe Biden and the Democrats don't like Brexit. They don't like self-determination, sovereignty, democracy for that matter, even though they're called Democrats. Uh, and they, they, they are in love with Brussels and the European Union because it's another international body an institution that is not really accountable to anybody. So they like it. Um, now, these are the same EU ambassadors and all these senior sources in the European Union who only a few months ago, uh, they wrote a letter uh, to China and the Chinese government, the CCP, um, begging them to uh, become allies uh, with the European Union. Uh, this was, you know, literally only a few months ago when we were still going through all the lockdown stuff and everything else globally, uh, the European Union uh, figures decided to beg the Chinese government to be friends with them. Uh, at the same time, they are losing their actual allies, the US, the UK. Uh, why? Is China better than the West? Maybe it is for the European Union. I don't really know. Uh, even people like Kim Darrick, who was a uh, uh, one of the recent uh, UK ambassadors to the United States. He was bestie with Barack Obama when he was president. Um, Kim Darrick doesn't like Donald Trump. And uh, that's why he actually lost his job 
about a year ago, I believe. Uh, so he's now also come out to say uh, that whoever wins the, the election in November, uh, it, essentially it's the, the bedrock of the relationship, defense, security, intelligence, collaboration. Um, now he says that um, if it's Biden, there are likely to be some issues. Well, I agree with that. Uh, he says that the Democrats don't like or support Brexit. They may prioritize for, uh, trade deals with the Pacific region or the EU over the US-UK trade deal. Um, he's right. My, po my issue is, why does he have to talk? You know, he was, he was, an, he was a diplomat. He was, an, <laughs> he was an ambassador. And he's going around like a commentator, um, obviously saying all these things. That they have to be very careful, these f figures, because... Um, they, they were connected at some point and uh, their words matter. Um, but so obviously the, we, we live in a world where uh, bureaucrats uh, become commentators after they leave their job. Uh, we'll see if Mark Sedville, the former head of uh, civil service, will do the same soon or not. Um, now, the latest update that we have is that we're still winning this game, the UK. Uh, they, they've decided to actually extend the, the trade talks until Monday. Uh, no, Wednesday. Why do I say Monday? Wednesday. So we have three days uh, because last week, obviously, the UK uh, won that battle uh, with, the, with the bluff and everything that they did. They're walking away from the trade talks. The European Union panicked and uh, Michel Barnier came to London uh, on Thursday and uh, they didn't really talk much. He, he was planning to come last Monday and uh, Lord Frost said, I don't want to talk to you. Uh, and uh, so now the European Union have come back and said that, OK, fine. Let's actually negotiate a an actual trade deal. Uh, try to resolve all this political alignment debates and everything else. Uh, so Lord Frost and Boris Johnson have said, "Fine, you can stay in London for another week, and uh, we'll we'll give you until Wednesday." And uh, they're going to essentially talk about this. It's interesting because again, he was actually supposed to leave um, tomorrow, and uh, Michel Barnier and his team. Uh, but obviously, the sources have now told BBC that. Uh, they're going to essentially stay around for a few days to uh, resolve all these issues. At this point, my view on this is that um, obviously I'm pro free trade, as you guys know. But with this stuff that's been going on, I would rather just go with no deal, uh, which is still obviously on the table. The deadline is the end of December. And uh, to be fair, the Boris Johnson government have already indicated that they're ready. They don't really care at this point unless they get a proper trade deal, a good deal. They will walk away and everything's fine. The reason I say I would rather just walk away anyway is because these people are playing games again. So now the European Union are trying to ban Brits uh, at the like airports from using their e-passport gates. Obviously, the Brits have this uh, uh, fast track lane or whatever it's called uh, it, when when you go to mainland Europe to uh, use your kind of passport at, the, at these kind of e-passport gates. Um, and the European Union agreed with the UK as part of the Brexit deal to maintain this arrangement uh, for both sides. And now they're saying that they want to get rid of it. So do you remember when they said that the, the, if the UK triggers the internal market bill, the, the Northern Ireland protocol aspects, uh, they will be, the UK will be breaking its obligations when it comes to this international treaty? Well... The European Union have consistently and constantly uh, broken their obligations when it comes to this treaty. And this is another, another example, which is quite silly now, because the Commission has now told uh, the EU27 uh, that visitors from the UK will be blocked from using passports e-gates uh, from 2021. And they will be forced to uh, join the long queues of arrivals uh, from the rest of the world, uh, like the US, China, or all, all the other countries that they have, Canada. Um, again, it's, it's all silly at this point because this was already agreed and they're just playing games. But let's have hope because we still have the European Parliament. You know the European Parliament, the really legitimate Parliament, and people like Guy Hofstadt are very supportive. No, they're not. He's now come out to criticise the, the, his own Parliament. Well, it's not even a real parliament, but still, let's call it, call it parliament for now. He's now tweeted that uh, a year and a half into the mandate, the European Parliament hasn't found its role yet. Well, he's finally admitting that the European Parliament doesn't have a role. Yeah, we know that. Uh, the EU as a whole suffers from the resulting uh, lack of direction. We need 
the, the conference on the future of Europe to... Uh, okay, he's gone on this rant before. He talks about how the European Union is democratic and, you know, it's so nice. But he's also actually made speeches and written articles about uh, how his vision of this federal Europe, the United States of Europe, only uh, can happen if you get rid of all these vetoes, if you get rid of all these democratic votes in the European Parliament. Uh, so he's not even hiding his face anymore. But at least he admits that the European Parliament doesn't have a role. We know that. You're all puppets. Uh, so yeah, um, so if you've seen this story in The Guardian, The Observer, or heard about it on Sky News, don't panic. It's not the government. The European Union is playing dirty tactics as usual uh, to divide us um, because they know that obviously the Trump election is very important. It's a very sensitive issue at this point. Uh, but don't worry, everything's fine. Let's keep going. Uh, subscribe to the channel. A lot of you mentioned that uh, you've been off subscribe or you don't really see my videos. I still do videos every day. So uh, make sure to check out the, ch uh, just the channel every day, every night when you get home. Uh, we'll just uh, double check that you are subscribed every now and then and uh, support the channel by becoming a member. Uh, we have, it's Sunday, so I'm going to have our weekly video podcast for the members. Uh, you can check out the link in the description or just go on youtube.com slash myTC slash join and get all the members only content on myTC. And I'll see you guys in the next video.